Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about the equilibrium constant and how we might use it to check certain things. Now, by now we've hopefully got an understanding of what the equilibrium constant is and how we write expressions for it. And we should also know what factors change it or cause it to change. So we're going to use this understanding to predict with certainty. So we can now say for sure whether the concentration of something will get back to its original value or not. This is something we've touched on a few times, but we haven't looked at, that, looked at in any depth, and we're going to do that in this film. It's a little bit more complicated, and we're going to use our sketches of concentration time graphs to kind of help us understand why we're doing this and how we might figure things out. But to be sure, we're going to have to use K. And if we're going to use K, then we need to remember a really important fact about it, and that is it will never change unless the temperature changes. And this can strike people as a little bit odd because if we look at this example here so let's say we've got this equilibrium between copper metal and silver ions with copper ions and silver metal on the right here's the equilibrium constant for that system not including any solids remember because their concentrations can't change so they're constant and the people often wonder understandably if i add copper ions to this system how is it that k is not going to change if I increase the top of this fraction, surely this number changes. Well, the problem with that is that it overlooks the fact that k is a number we can only calculate when a system is at equilibrium. So by saying we're going to increase the copper ions and then calculate k, we haven't given the, the system a chance to get back to equilibrium yet. So let's think about what will happen as this system gets back to equilibrium. Okay, Le Chatelier says that if we increase this, the system will try and reduce it, so it will move left. That's not really a very good explanation for a waste examiner, so we ought to be able to say that as we increase the concentration of this, the, concentra uh, the chances of it colliding with silver increases, and so the backward reaction increases. It doesn't affect the chances of these two things colliding, so the forward reaction is unaffected, and so the backward reaction is favoured, and so we'll start to use copper up, and we'll start to produce silver instead. Now. If we had increased this and it started to fall and this number started to rise along with it, then we can imagine a situation where these two numbers could be such that we would get back to our original value of k. And so k could remain the same even though we had made a change. Now, this, comes, this becomes important when we are, let's say, plotting the concentration of copper ions on the concentration time graph because if the system was at equilibrium and therefore the concentration of them isn't changing and then we suddenly add some copper actually a vertical line then we should be able to decide whether the concentration of copper ions will fall well we know it will fall because Le Chatelier predicts that but is it going to fall back to its original value or is it going to stop short of that and finish up higher than it was before we know it can't go past its original value, but how can we be sure which one of these two things is going to happen? Well, this is where the equilibrium constant is going to be our friend, and it's going to help us figure this out. So in order to do this, let's have a look at a couple of examples. First of all, we'll start with this equilibrium system between calcium carbonate and calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. We're going to ask ourselves, if we had a container with this system in it and we halved the volume of it, how would the concentration and mass of carbon dioxide change in this container. Okay, now, first of all, let's have a look at what the equilibrium constant expression is. There's no solids in it, so we're left with just the product here. So the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of carbon dioxide. Let's plot the concentration of carbon dioxide, since that's one of the things we're asked on our concentration time graph. Constant concentration, because we're at equilibrium, suddenly we halve the volume of the container, so the concentration will double, because remember that C equals N on V. Now, is the concentration of carbon dioxide going to fall back to its original value or not? Well, let's see what K is. It's equal to the concentration of carbon dioxide. So at equilibrium, because K can't change, because the temperature hasn't changed, then the concentration of carbon dioxide can't change. So we can say for sure that it's going to come right back down to its original value. Okay, because the temperature didn't change, we know that k is still the same. Notice, however, that 
this concentration shot up because the volume changed. Now it's falling because the system is using up carbon dioxide, so the number of moles is falling. And that means that the mass of it will fall. So even though we end up at the same concentration as before, we're going to have less carbon dioxide in the container. So if the question had been phrased this way, and this is quite a common way of seeing these questions, state how these concentrations of masses will change in a little table like this one. Well, we've seen that because the equilibrium constant can't change, that at the new equilibrium, the concentration of carbon dioxide must be the same, so unaffected. But the mass of carbon dioxide, because it was brought down again to respond to this increase, the mass is going to have fallen. Okay, so there's a difference there between concentration and mass that is quite important that we can understand. Here's another more complicated example. This has got this equilibrium system in it, the one that's used in the harbour process, right? nitrogen and hydrogen reacting together to form ammonia. Show how the concentration and mass of nitrogen will change. So let's put nitrogen on this axis as a concentration. Once the equilibrium is attained again, so by the time we get back to equilibrium, if nitrogen were added to this container. Okay, so we're at equilibrium, so the concentration is flat. We add some nitrogen, it suddenly shoots up. It's going to fall back down again. Le Chatelier predicts that it will move forward. Collision theory tells us that there's a greater chance of these things colliding now, so the forward reaction will be favoured. Okay. Can we use this equilibrium constant expression to decide whether the nitrogen concentration will fall back down to its original value or not? Remembering it can't go past its original value. It might be worth stopping at this moment and seeing whether you can figure this out. Okay, I'm go ahead, going to go ahead and do something which we don't really have to do at WACE, which is to plug some numbers into here. Okay, now let's just imagine that every one of these concentrations was 2 before we made the change. In that case, k would be equal to 2 squared over 2 times 2 cubed. Okay, and we can, calcul we can cancel 2 of our 2s and we're left with 1 over 4. Okay, so the value of our equilibrium constant in this imaginary situation is 1 over 4. Okay, now during, so that is to say, before we get back to equilibrium again, we've made a change. Let's say we put the concentration of up, the nitrogen up to 2.5. Okay, so the concentration of nitrogen has changed 2.5. We didn't change the others. So they're going to be the same. So at this particular moment that the change was made, Without even bothering to calculate all this, we can see that this number is going to be smaller than 1 over 4, because I've increased the bottom of the fraction. Okay. Now, after, the question we're asking ourselves, remember, is, is this going to get back to its original value or not? And if that was the case, if it did, then nitrogen would have to get back to 2. What would happen to the other concentrations if this happened? Okay. So the hydrogen concentration, which, remember, was unchanged at 2 at that moment, but has now had to fall with the nitrogen. But three hydrogens for every nitrogen. So this is going to go to 0.5. So if the nitrogen got back to 2, then calculating K at the new equilibrium would be 2 times 0.5 cubed on the bottom. What would have happened to the ammonia concentration? Well, that would have gone up. How much would it have gone up by? twice as much as the nitrogen went down. So this would go up to 3. Now again, I don't have to calculate this, hopefully, to see that this number is greater than 1 over 4. Remember, this number is what we found if, and only if, the nitrogen fell back down to its original value. Remember, at this stage here, so at the moment that we're at here, the equilibrium constant is smaller than it should be. If nitrogen falls back to its original value, it will get bigger than it should be. So in other words, it will overshoot where it's trying to get to. So we can say with certainty that the nitrogen concentration will fall, but not back down to its original value. And what's more, we can see that the mass of nitrogen here went up when I added nitrogen. It's falling now because nitrogen is being used up, 
it's not falling quite as far as it started off. Okay, so here the concentration is changing because the number of moles is changing, not because any volumes are changing. And so if we got this question here, where we had the um, table to fill in, then we know that by the time we've reached the equilibrium again, as we just showed on that graph, the new oh. nitrogen concentration will be higher than it was before. The mass of nitrogen will also be higher than it was before. But somehow or other, because these numbers are changing by just the right, amount, right amounts, we can still end up with an equilibrium constant that is the same as it was before we made the change. Okay, so as I said, that is much more involved than the other things, than the way we've looked at it in the past. But hopefully now you can see how it is that we can use K to say for certain whether when we change the concentration of something, whether it's going to get back to its original value or not, whether it be in a sketch graph or whether you be filling in a table or any other kind of question that you might see on a test or an exam. As usual, it's really important that if any of this didn't make sense, that you come and ask a question or you post a comment on YouTube so that you can have your questions answered.